Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Efreda, Washington. We get asked all the time about needles. What needle should I use? What needle do I want to use? What needle is going to give me the best results? So I thought I would just take a couple of minutes and go through machine needles and hand needles and the most important things that I think you should know. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. All right, I am just gonna go through a couple of things kind of briefly. There is so much to know about needles. Needles really are precision tools. They put a lot of thought into the crafting of needles to make sure that they do exactly what they're supposed to be doing. If you're really interested in it, they do have little booklets. Um, this one is kind of nice, Know Your Needles. It's like an $8 book. The first half of it is all about machine needles and the second half is about hand needles. And they specifically talk about each needle, what it's used for, and why you would choose that needle over another one. So there is that, but I'm just gonna talk about a couple of just basics for you, just so that you can have success with your projects. So first of all, let's talk about machine needles, sewing machine needles. So a lot of people think that if they have a Bernina or a Husqvarna or a Faf or a Singer, that they take a certain type of needle. That used to be true, and the old Singers took a very specific needle, but that's no longer true. Now, whether you choose Classe or Schmetz or or Inspire, whatever brand of the needle, it will work in your machine. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, what you want to think about is the type of needle that you're choosing. So a lot of people will, if they don't know, they will just choose universal because they think, well, in the term, that means that I can universally use this new needle for everything that I'm doing. That is actually not true. Um, a universal needle has a little bit of a ball tip to it, so it's not super sharp, and it has just that average size scarf. And so it is kind of a gen generic needle is probably more the word that I would use um, if you're not really very sure. But for me, I would still pick something with it that's a sharp. And a sharp means, of course, that the tip of the needle is sharp and not blunted. So if we look at a machine needle, the components that go into deciding are um, the scarf, and the scarf runs down the shaft and it's where the thread kind of lies. There's the eye of the needle and then there's the point. Those three things are critical in deciding which needle is designed for the project that you're, use, that, that you're sewing. Um, a quilting needle is actually a sharp and it has a medium sized scarf. And so that way you're able to use this with 40 weight, 50 weight, 60 weight thread, um, whatever you'd like to do. And it has a nice sharp point. So it's not going to pull any other threads. It's not going to pop through your um, batik uh, uh, fabrics. Um, you can sew through multiple layers or just one layer with the top stitch. It works really well. The only thing you want to think about is maybe what size. If you're determining the weight of your thread or the size of your needle is based on the weight of your thread. So I tend to just consistently use the 8012s. The reason there's two numbers is the first number is the American number. The second number is the European number. Um, an interesting tidbit is that machine needles, uh, for machine needles, the smaller the number, the smaller the needle, which makes sense. But for some reason, for hand needles, which we'll talk about in a second, the smaller the needle, the larger the needle, the smaller the number, the larger the needle. So it's opposite. I don't know why that is. It's just to be super confusing. But anyway, um, so a 12 is about an average or an 80 is about an average size. They go down to a 60 and they go up to a 100. So for a machine needle. Um, the other one that you want to consider using if you're quilting is an embroidery needle. Now, the embroidery needles are intended for 
embroidery machines. And so people that have all of that thread and they're laying down all of that thread, what's nice about these is that the way that they're designed with the, the thickness of the shaft and the um, point in the needle is that they can go over multiple layers of threads and stack all of those threads without fraying or catching anything. So it's very, very nice. Um, the way that you would use this as a quilter is that if you're doing machine quilting, free motion quilting on your sewing machine, I would choose an embroidery needle. And again, it's just designed for that. It's designed to go through all of those layers, all of those threads stack over the, sew over the top of where you've maybe already been and it doesn't catch anything. So it's very, very nice. The other thing is one of these I picked was a titanium needle. And a titanium, it's not the metal, um, it's the it's the finish. And so some people think that if they have a titanium needle, it doesn't break. And so they've been told that that's a dangerous needle to use with their machine because instead of the needle snapping, it will bend and it causes trouble with the hook. Maybe that was true previously, but that is not currently the case. Now what they do is titanium is a coating that's on your nickel needles. And so it's a coating that makes it slide through the fabric a little bit longer. It makes your needle last a little bit longer. And if you happen to be sewing through things that have adhesive on them or maybe fusible web, something that might be sticky, the needle doesn't get sticky. So titanium coating is really, really nice. You might spend an extra dollar or two, but even at that, you're still not paying more than a dollar per needle. Needles are super inexpensive, which is why you should change your needles more often. Your average nickel needle will last five to 10 hours, which is really barely through one project. But if it's titanium coated, it can last about 20 hours. But I know that a lot of people, they wait and they change their needle when it breaks. And usually by then it's already super, super dull. So the best thing about machine needles, the biggest thing to take away is that if you are stitching and you notice on your stitching that your needles are not stacking properly, and by that I mean need um, a stitch that is perfectly in line with all of them. If you're seeing that some of them are kind of tipping in a different way, oftentimes it's because of your needle. The needle and the thread and the project that you're making do not all coincide and don't work well together. So oftentimes if you just change your needle, that's oftentimes all you need to do. It's not an adjustment on a machine. It's not a tension issue. It's just a needle issue. So um, experiment a little bit, play with some of those, change your needle and um, see what you think and see what needles you like the best. I do have to say that for me personally, I use sharps, quilting and embroidery needles almost all the time for everything that I'm doing. I use sharps for um, top stitching. All right, let's go on to hand needles. Hand needles is kind of a big deal because hand needles um, there are so many different kinds. A lot of it depends on what you're doing. So kind of like the sewing machine needle, what's happening with the, the, uh, the hand needle is that um, the needle is designed based on the thickness of the shaft, the eye of the needle, and the point. So all of those things are specifically designed so that you have precise results for whatever it is that you're doing. So for example, a Milner or a straw needle is a needle where the eye is the exact same thickness as the shaft. So if you are doing something that you want to be very invisible, um, you may be doing some hand applique, um, that would be a really good choice. However, typically Milners have a small eye, so they're hard to thread. Um, the other thing is the the size of the shaft some people like a shorter needle they feel like that rocks a little bit easier and it's easier to handle and some people like a longer needle there is no right or wrong reasoning with that it is a very personal thing it's whatever is most comfortable whatever fits your hands i know that for me because i have kind of short stubby little fingers i like a little bit of a shorter needle but I kind of go back and forth and a lot of it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm hand sewing on binding, it's a very different process than if I'm doing machine embroidery. So I have a huge assortment of hand needles. They don't go bad. 
Um, it's nice to have the right needle for the job. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, where I might have just a few machine needles, this is a little bit different. The biggest question that we have is people will ask, what is the hand needle that I need for sewing on binding? We're gonna do kind of a close-up shot of these for you and show you that there's kind of two options. If you like a little bit of a longer needle, then I would suggest, oh, I'm gonna flip this around, the quilting size 10. It's a sharp needle. Um, um, oh, wait. I'm gonna hold these needles up so that you get a little bit better shot of these. So this one happens to be a quilting size 10. This is probably our most popular needle. It is a sharps, which means that it has a nice sharp, sharp point. It has a small little eye, but it works really well for sewing through multiple layers, through sewing on your binding, any hand sewing, it will work great. But I want you to notice that it's extremely short. This one over here is a sewing, a sharps size nine. So this one is very, very similar. It's also a sharp needle. It has a little bit larger eye, eye and it's longer. So these are our two top selling needles for hand work. Either one would be reasonable. It just sort of, again, depends on your hand and what you'd like. What we usually suggest with people, if you're not sure, we suggest that you get an assortment pack. Get an assortment, try a couple sizes, see which one you keep picking up and see which one you like. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is that the eye of the needle is critical depending upon the thread, the hand thread that you're using. If you're using embroidery floss, you need an embroidery needle or a tapestry needle or a chenille needle. Chenille and tapestry are very, very similar in terms of a large shaft and a large eye, but a chenille needle is sharp and a tapestry needle is dull. And so you want to choose properly there. Um, the other thing is, again, in brands, when it comes to machines, they're machine needles, they're kind of all similar. Class A, Schmetz, Inspira, they're pretty much similar. In terms of hand needles, I'm just gonna say that Tulip are very, very different. First of all, um, they are not nickel. All of the other ne needles are made out of nickel. These all have a coating on them. So if you have a nickel allergy, you won't have to worry about that. The other thing is the way that they're honed or sharpened is a little bit different. Um, and so instead of being, you know, um, sharpened uh, in a, a round sort of a, oh, I don't know that I can even describe it, but if you're putting it in and, and it's buffing it this way, it leaves apparently microscopic little lines on there. Um, the tulip needles, they are sharpened um, linear. And so there isn't those funny little tiny little lines. I don't know what it is, I mean, beyond that, but I can tell you that with my eyes closed, if I'm stitching, if I am working around a room, helping somebody and demonstrating something, I can tell the difference if somebody has a tulip needle or they don't. Um, we call them Tulip. They're also known as Hiroshima. They are more expensive. We carry all of the, we carry multiple brands. We carry all of the sizes. Um, they are more expensive. These are like nine bucks. Um, but again, $9 for six needles. You're still spending barely over a dollar per needle. It seems like it's a pretty reasonable, inexpensive thing to make sure that your results come out exactly the way that you'd like. So Anyway, let's see. I think that's about it. Those are kind of the basics. There's a lot more information about needles. If you have questions, you can certainly email us or call us. We can talk through your project, what it is that you're doing and what you'd like to try. Um, we do have some needle packets that we give out in classes where we have kind of a little sample pack of people to to try different things. We do want you to find your perfect needle for your perfect job that fits your hand properly. So anyway, thanks for watching. And if there's anything that you'd like, you can visit us at fabricpatch.net and pick out your perfect needle. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.